Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for this wonderful time of fellowship, worship. Lord, we pray. Holy Spirit, fill this place with your divine presence and let me hear your voice. Let me receive a rhema word from you which will comfort our lives, which would be an encouraging in our spiritual life. In Jesus' name I pray. Greetings to you all in Jesus' name. Once again, I welcome you all on behalf of South Asian International Fellowship to this Sunday English Worship Service. So as, as there is a very short time, uh, straight away I'm going into my sermon. The topic what I have taken for my today's message is Four Divisions of Workers in God's Field. Four Divisions of Workers in God's Field. Uh, we all have a habit of reading our Bible every day. As years pass by, when we read the same scripture again and again, once in a while the Holy Spirit would highlight a verse or a word. And there is deep insight in that single word which we see in the verse. So today I'm going to share with you what the Holy Spirit has revealed in my personal Bible study. I believe the scripture portion, what I'm going to read now in my message, probably you have read the scripture portion many times in your daily Bible meditation. But I've never heard a sermon on this topic, what I'm going to preach today. The scripture portion, what I've taken for my message today is from Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, from verse 19 to 29. Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verse 19 to 29. There are a few words what I have highlighted in the scripture portion. And you could see it on the screen. In verse 19, hired servants. In verse 22, servants. Again in verse 26, servants. In 29, I have been slaving for you. There are four divisions of workers in God's field. You all know about the scripture portion. We, are heard, we heard many sermons from the pulpit, from the prodigal son story. And personally, we have learned many messages from the life of prodigal son, about how he backslided in his life, and about the love of the father of the prodigal son, and about the unforgiveness of the prodigal's, uh, prodigal son elder brother. So we have heard many messages on these three characters. But in my personal Bible study, the Holy Spirit highlighted about the servants in that scripture portion. Uh, David says in Psalm 63 verse 4 or 5 and verse 6, Lord, when I remember you on my bed and when I meditate your word, my soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness. He says, most of you, I think, you visited Adam's Hawker Center here in Singapore. There's a famous food store there and the, uh, uh, the thing is like, it's a bone marrow soup, mutton bone marrow soup. Most of the Singaporeans, they visit that Adam's Hawker Center to taste this bone marrow soup. So for David, King David, reading the word of God and meditating the word of God is tasting the bone marrow soup when he gets deep revelations through the help of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So the first division of workers in the God's field is Gospel of Luke chapter 15 verse 19. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, the prodigal son says to himself in his heart. Make me like one of your high servants. So he got up and went to his father. When we see in the Greek translation, the scripture portion, for hired servant, it's written, Miss Theos. Miss Theos. That is, a servant 
who is working for wages. A man of God or a believer who follows and serves Jesus Christ seeking for his own gain, probably money, position, honor. The hired servant is not concerned about the will of the master, about the heart of the master. He is only concerned about the payment what he is going to get at the end of the month, the salary what he is going to receive. The hired servant would not understand the burden of the father. The father had a burden in his heart towards the prodigal son as he's gone, he's away from the home. So what uh, can we learn from this is that many ministries at this point of time around the world, many churches, many men of God. My question for you is to approve a man of God's ministry or to approve a church ministry what God primarily sees in that man of God's ministry or the church ministry? Can you give an answer? The primary thing to approve that ministry, to approve the work of that man of God, what God would see primarily, the first thing. Vision. Sir? Okay, vision. Praise God, yes, of course. Any other answers? Character. Praise God. Any other answers? Okay, there's no time. The primary thing, what I believe and what the Holy Spirit prompted in my life is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Ministry without sacrifice cannot be accepted by God. Because Jesus himself came into this world sacrificing his life. And obviously, God sees sacrifice. What we give up to do the will of God. There are many ministries, there are many men of God preaching here in the international speakers. But personally, I know if we have to invite them, they demand certain amount to come and preach in the church. Now, my thought was, if the, in the early church, if the apostles had the same mentality, would the gospel be, uh, would the gospel be reached to many places in Asia? Certainly not. They never had this kind of thing in their mind. They were willing to sacrifice their own money to go and preach the gospel. So it's very important. The first primary thing to see in a man of God or in a ministry is whether there is sacrifice of time, money, resources or not. The Bible says, I think in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, on the day of judgment, God would judge the good and the bad deeds. God will judge the good deeds as well as the bad deeds. I thought why God should, he himself is telling them that uh, these are good deeds and why he should judge good deeds. The thing is, good deeds also can be done with a selfish, bad motive. So, in the, at the, as we are in the end times, personally, even in this lockdown period, even this in this crisis and uncertainty, God has blessed us abundantly, giving us all that we need in our personal and family life. I would request you, just close your eyes with me now and just agree with me in this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the job what you granted in our lives, for the position, for the honor, for the skill, for the wisdom, for the knowledge, what you have given in our lives. God, we lay everything on your altar. Whatever we have achieved in our life, whatever we, are, we have gained in our life, maybe money, position, or resources, we lay at your feet and we put all of these things on your altar and we give all glory and honor to you alone. Praise God. Hallelujah. And let us pray in our daily prayer to God asking him to raise up prophets like Moses, prophets like Joshua, men of God like apostles who could work for God selflessly without any selfish ambition. The second verse is from Gospel of Luke chapter, uh, Gospel of Luke chapter 15 and verse 22. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring 
with the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Now for the second time you see the word servants. The second division of servants in the father's house. The Greek word which is used in this context is daulos. And the meaning of it is hired to do the will of the master. A man of God or a believer who follows Jesus Christ denying his own ambitions, desires, plans to fulfill the purpose of God in his life. There is going to be, I think there is going to be a great regret in the hearts of most of the believers who would end up in heaven one day. The regret is because in heaven the word of God says, I mean Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19, few are going to be in high position and few are going to be in lower positions. High position and lower positions. And when we are in that lower position, that lower category in heaven, probably we may have regret in our heart thinking, oh, I could have done much more for God in my lifetime on earth. When I was having enough money, when I was healthy, when I was having good free time, I could have done something more for the church. But there is no second chance to come back onto earth and work for God. So whatever we could sacrifice or whatever we could do, this is the only life what God has given us. And let, let us use whatever God has blessed us to glorify Him. I mean to say, as a believer in the church, preaching the gospel and testifying, uh, testifying Christ is a universal call. There is no special calling for that. If you are a believer, in a church, you have a role and responsibility to fulfill for the growth of the church. So, hire to do the will of the master. These servants are not concerned about the wages or the salary what they are going to receive at the end of the month. That is not their satisfaction. Probably they will be getting in salary. But their satisfaction is in doing the will of the master. The, second, uh, the third division is from Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verse 26 and 27. I'm just giving the outline of the sermon as I'm not having enough time to go deep. So he called one of the servants again and asked him what was going on. Here in the Greek translation, in the context, for servants, the word being used is pays. Pays. The meaning of pays is a child servant. A man of God or a believer who is immature in the things of God. Not maturing in the word of God. Not maturing in prayer. Not maturing in the fellowship. And not maturing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I would like to ask you what is the primary reason for being immature in our spiritual life as years pass by. Can you give me a primary? There are many reasons. The primary reason why most of the believers, even men of God, they stay immature. There is no proper spiritual growth in their life. The primary reason, I could say, pride. it's an attitude. Yeah, pride and anything else? Laziness. Sorry? Laziness. Yeah, laziness, of course. Even laziness, pride. Any other answers? So, in my point of view, the primary thing is not willing to be corrected. <laughs> not willing to be corrected. We see children in the schools, you know, when they make a mistake, the teacher, especially Sister Balbi, I think, the teacher will correct the student and he has to submit to the correction to learn the thing in a correct way. In the same way, even in our life, if we want to mature in the word of God, in prayer, in fellowship, and the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to be willing, uh, we should be willing to be corrected by the spiritual authority what God has placed in the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
So the, in the context here, for the servants is written, Pias, Pais, that is a child servant, an immature servant who is not willing to be corrected. And the last thing is, Gospel of Luke chapter 15, verse 29. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you. Now this is the elder brother of the prodigal son. And never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Now the Greek word written in the Greek context is for elder brother in the context slaving for you is dao leo. Dao leo means a born slave. A worker who is not given any wages. He is not working for wages. He is a born slave to work for his master. He would be not having any privileges. A man of God or a believer who follows and serves Jesus Christ with a selfish ambition. Now I would like to tell you at this point of my message, the 12 disciples, they were with Jesus for three and a half years in his earthly ministry. But yet, they coveted and they desired the anointing and the gifts in Jesus, in Jesus was operating. But in the 12 disciples, no one could understand the burden, the agony, the sorrow, the despair, what Jesus was having in his heart, remembering his crucifixion. Then they knew that Jesus was going to die on the cross, but most of the 12, I think all the 12 disciples were so selfish. They were just having high thoughts about themselves to be the next line leader in the group of disciples. So everybody was so ambitious, but they were not understanding the heart of Jesus Christ. Even the same way, the elder brother was with the father, but he could not understand the pain, the sorrow, the agony, what the father had in his heart towards the lost son. Dear believers in Christ, in this end times, we all have our own responsibilities as a father, as a mother, as an employee in an organization. But let us pray to God and ask God, God, why you have put me in this position at this place? It may be a school, it may be a corporate organization. What are your plans towards my life in placing here? Please reveal it. Who I need to minister? For whom I need to pray? Now as a pastor, we don't have an access to come and preach gospel in your school or in your private organization. Now how the lost souls could be ministered who are there? God wants to use each and every believer. You, know, you might not be a pastor or an apostle or a prophet. But if you are a believer and if you seek the power of the Holy Spirit, God would use you like a prophet and prophetess in your workplace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just pray every day and ask God what you want me to fulfill today in the position where you have placed me. Whom I need to minister. God is seeking for servants who could do personal ministry in this end times. In the coming days, there will not be, I think, there will be no possibility to conduct big seminars or conferences. No. The church is going, I think, the church will be shifting back as the early church was. In the early church, they could not publicly come and gather. The gathering was in secret and the ministry was person to person and family to family. The things are going to change in the same way and God would fill believers with the power of the Holy Spirit to manifest His divine power when, when you minister even to a single person or to a single family. Praise God. Hallelujah. At this end of my message, I would ask you to just close your eyes and just agree with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we commit our spirit, soul, body and mind to your divine authority. Thank you for the help 
Thank you for the finances. Thank you for the job. Thank you for the position. Thank you for the resources. Whatever you have blessed us till today. Now we lay everything on your altar and let me know how we could fulfill your divine purposes in our lives. How could I fulfill your purpose in the job where you have placed me, Lord? How could I glorify you in my workplace? Lord, let I use all my talents for your glory, for your honor, for the growth of the church. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your divine protection around our lives. Let me selflessly work for the extension of your kingdom. Let me personally know to whom we need to minister. It might be a single person you want us to meet. It may be a single family you want us to go and pray and comfort them. Lord, we want to do your ministry not on Sunday itself, but in every day of the week. Help us, Lord, to understand the promptings of the Holy Spirit and let me be very sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.